All right, so I'm going to discuss the surface area of a right cylinder from the aspect of being a function. So A with respect to R. And here's that function kind of rewritten. And what we're going to do here is uh, set the H to 4, just arbitrarily. Let's say it's 4 inches high or 4 feet high, whatever. So our cylinder is going to have an H value, a height value of 4. And so we'll plug it in, and that allows us to set this function up in terms of R. So we've got a function in terms of R, which would now become 2 pi R squared plus 2 pi R times 4. And if we rearrange that, we've got AR equals 2 pi r squared plus 8 pi r. And so right now, you could take this function, and maybe you want um, a radius of 2, and you could find the surface area of the cylinder um, at, that, at any value you wanted. So, you know, you could go 2 pi times 2 squared, plus 8 pi times 2 by plugging it in, and uh, that produces the area. So our area would be, you know, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8 pi, so you'd have 8 pi there, plus 16 pi. And so if you add those together, our area would be 24 pi. So, so we can calculate pretty much any area we want now based on the radius. Well, what if we wanted to reverse that and find out our radius from any area? So let's, let's invert this function. Let's solve for r. And to do that, we're going to need some kind of special algebra, algebra tools. And so here we go. And so we'll start our, with a fresh, our fresh equation here. Um, I kind of dropped the a at x uh, part, just left it a. So now we have a and r. And our height is still 4 for this particular cylinder. And so we're going to solve this thing for r. So the first thing you're going to want to do is factor out. You notice you notice here that you got a 2 pi and an 8 pi. So I'm going to factor a 2 pi out so that this term here is a 1 in front of that r squared. So in front of it, it's called the quadratic term. And so we would have a equals 2 pi. And, and you think of it as reverse distribution. So that would be r squared plus, and if you take um, a 2 pi out of 8 pi, you know, 8 pi divided by 2 pi, you know, off to the side, maybe you want to do that, just so you can convince yourself. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so this would be 4r. And when, when you're completing the square, you're going to leave a little space there, because we're going to add something and find this value and how you find that value to go there is you divide the middle term which in our case is this 4r or that is called the linear term so we're going to take that 4 we're going to divide it by 2 and we're going to square it that's the completing the square part well 4 divided by 2 is 2 and 2 squared is 4 and so we're going to put a 4 there. Now, our equation's out of balance. By adding a 4, this side of the equation is now heavier than this side on the left. So what we have to do then is balance it out by adding something to that a. So we're going to have a plus something equals 2 pi times r squared plus 4r plus 4. Well, notice, notice we multiplied this 2 pi, you know, through there. So imagine you'd have to distribute that through. And so we're going to have to balance this equation. We're going to have to take the 2 pi times the 4. And so that would be 8 pi. So to balance this equation now, you just have to add an 8 pi here. And... Uh, so now our equation um, is balanced out. Sorry, my 
sound cut out for just a second. So we've got 8, a plus 8 pi equals all of that stuff. So I'll rewrite it here. And so the next thing we're going to do, and the whole reason we did this, is so that we can factor r squared plus 4r plus 4. So we're going to factor that next. Now to do this problem, there's a lot of skills we're adding together here. Um, you may not remember how to factor, things like that. So it would be a good idea to go look that up. So, but, but this particular right side here, this factors, and the way I've always done it is plus plus, means our signs are going to be plus plus in the middle. You know, r squared breaks into r and r. And again, this is just distribution. We're breaking it apart so that we could distribute it back together and get the same thing. And then if you look at 4, you got a possibility. You could have 4 and 1 or 2 and 2. Well, in our case, this factors into 2 and 2. And so if, and if you check that, if you did, you know, some call it FOIL, some, you know, it's distribution to me. You know, that's 2R and that's 2R. That gives you the 4R in the middle. We already know that R times R is R squared. We already know that 2 times 2 is 4. And so 2R plus 2R is 4R. So that is factored correctly. And so what we have here is A plus 8 pi equals 2 pi times R plus 2. And then since there's two of them, it's R plus 2 and R plus 2. That would be R plus 2 squared. And that is factored. And so at this point, I'm going to uh, use the um, use the symmetric property and flip this all around because I don't like solving things on the uh, from the right to the left. It doesn't really matter. You wouldn't have to do this step, but I like to do it because we're solving for r. And you've got this. So we've got uh, 2 pi times r plus 2 squared equals a plus uh, 8 pi. So the next step you're going to want to do then is uh, try to get this r by itself. So you're going to divide both sides by 2 pi, both sides of the equation. And what's nice is if you do that, then this left side cancels out because that's 1. And you're just left with r plus 2 squared equals a plus 8 pi over 2 pi. Kind of out of room at the bottom. And so we'll shift to the next page so we got some more room. So now at this point, we need to get rid of the square term here. And the inverse of a square is the square root. So we're going to square root both sides. I kind of ran out of room there um, in order to eliminate it. And, and what happens then is a square and a square root are inverses of each other. So those are gone. And we have in, in its place just the r plus 2. When you square it both sides, again, I'm assuming you know a lot of things that maybe you don't know. Um, you've always got a plus or minus there. It could either be positive or negative because of the natures of square roots. And then you would have a plus 8 pi all over 2 pi. And so we're down to just subtracting 2. And so I'm, you know, now it's, we've kind of gotten all the heavy lifting out of the way. So we'll subtract 2 from both sides. And now this thing is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of a plus 8 pi all over 2 pi. And there's some things we could do to simplify that, but for this, that's going to be good enough. Now, the other thing we need to think about is, you know, this is a cylinder. This is an actual, an actual cylinder with a height of 4. And here's my radius. And so we're not going to have negative radiuses or negative radii. And so we're part of this we can ignore because it's it's outside the bounds of our problem, outside of the um, domain of what the 
the R can be. And so you're not going to use the plus or minus, even though it was there. And so it is just A plus 8, square root of A, 8 pi there, all over 2 pi. I'm kind of squeezing that in. I'll rewrite that so that's nicer. But this is the formula now with respect to radius. All right, so at this point we've got the function. So now if we wanted to put it in function notation, because now we have the radius with respect to the area that we're going to plug in. So, you know, and again, this is just function notation. We're going to put in an area value that we're particularly interested in. Maybe there's a certain area we need um, because of the materials involved or, or something like that. You know, I don't know. It could be any a number of situations. But uh, let's assume that uh, A, so our area, let's assume it's like 200 units. I didn't really give units squared. So maybe it's inches squared or centimeters squared or feet squared or meters squared, something like that. So we know our surface area of this particular figure. And so what you can do then is just plug that thing in. So r at the value of 200 would equal negative 2 plus the square root of 200 plus 8 pi all divided by 2 pi. And now at this point, we can just pop out a calculator and, uh, and plug that thing in. So if we go over here, and I've got a, just a Desmos calculator uh, downloaded, just so you can kind of see how this thing plugs in. Um, so it's uh, negative 2 plus um, the square root. And I'm going to hit the division symbol here so that it brings up a fraction. And we can put in our 200 plus 8 times, whoops, I hit an equal sign, so plus <laughs> 8 times, and then we're looking for the pi key, there it is, pi divided by 2 pi, and there you have it. So our, for this particular value, we're about, we're looking at 3.98, 3.99, which is pretty much 4 for our radius also. So we have a radius of 4 approximately for this figure. And I also graphed the original equation. And so if you notice here, um, the values have to be, so, so here's, I typed it into GeoGebra here. So a at x equals 2 pi x squared plus 8 pi x. And, you know, we're interested in the range of this thing. Well, your radiuses, your x stands for your radiuses. Well, they can't be negative. So the, the range that we're dealing with starts here at 0, 0, or radius is 0, and works up. Where this is your, this particular axis is your, uh, is your uh, uh, vol or area, surface area. So if you go over here to Tools, and I'm going to just shrink this thing down so that we can see that 200 that I did. And you're going to see it kind of popping up. And there it is. And I'll put a point there. And uh, go back to the algebra so you can see that. And there you have it. 3.989 has a, has a surface area of 200. And there it is. And, and you could do that with any value. So maybe you wanted to know... Um, what it was at 2. Well, there's about 2. You know, at 2, it's about 74.2. And so this area from, from 0, 0 on up, that represents the domain of this particular function. You can ignore all of this stuff because you're not going to have a negative radius anyway. And so I hope this helps. Um, if you're, I, kind of a fun problem. I really enjoyed solving that for R. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. See you next time.